On Crickbuzz in conversation today, we've got someone who defines the word flamboyant. He gets onto the field and all eyes are on him. You never know what he's going to do next off the field. As you can see now, Dwayne Bravo has joined us. He's a riot of colour. You identify Dwayne Bravo with colour. How many colours do you have on that shirt that you're just wearing, Dwayne? I think I have all the colours in the world. So, um, like I said, I'm represented Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, uh, Hyderabad, KK, Delhi, everyone in this in this uniform here. Yeah. Right, and we look at your story through all the teams that you've represented. And the first one that comes to mind, of course, is the blue and gold of, uh, of the Mumbai Indians. Here you are uh, in the Mumbai Indians jersey. I remember you came to the Mumbai Indians in, in 2008. And I'll tell you, I don't know if you know the back story to that. Lasit Malinga was playing for the Mumbai Indians. He got injured. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and Sachin Tendulkar had to choose between you and Shah Langefeld. And he said, uh, Langefeld is a good death bowler, but with Bravo, I don't know what I'm going to get. Yeah. And, and so I, I, was, I was given the job of calling you. I, I have no idea yeah. where to call Dwayne Bravo. He's playing for the West Indies somewhere on an island somewhere. So I call up the only person I know I message. I know Tony Gozier. Ah, that's, that's the story because I remember it. I was in, the, I was in St. Lucia playing. Yeah. And um, after the game, I think we were on my way to the airport or somewhere, I, I walked by Mr. Kozia. And he said to me, um, you know, Mumbai Indians is trying to get onto you. Um, you know, uh, is it okay to pass on your number? And I was like, Mumbai Indians? And he was like, yeah, replacement for Lasit Malinga. I was like, wow. So straight away, I was like, Mumbai Indians, the, the most talked about city in India, uh, captained by Sachin Tendulkar. I said, this cannot be real, you know. Um, playing international cricket and being led by Brian Lara, who is my childhood hero. And then get an opportunity to go to India and play and be led by Sachin Tendulkar. I was like, so 23 years old, 24. This new kid just like in the hands of two greats, you know, international country, Brian Lara, domestic franchise, Sachin Tenduka. So getting to India, I was like, we all know that Sachin is a god, the god of cricket. So for me, as a little kid coming into that environment there, what I, I, I still remember looking at him with that awe in my eyes, like I'm scared to speak, like I don't want to sit close to him. It's like, it's like a little kid just admiring and being in the dressing room with like Sean Pollock, Sana Jarasuria. I remember one morning I was so excited. I went down to the gym early and Sean Pollock was there in the gym. And we started talking and it's like, for me, it was like a dream come true. Like these are players who were before me and who I all idolize. And now to call them teammates, being in the same dressing room with them. And it was just like too good to be true. You know? Yeah. you know, it took me a couple of days to call you eventually because Tony Cozier's mail to me, giving your telephone number, went into the spam folder. <laughs> and I, I didn't know anything about spam folder. Then suddenly I look one day, oh, it's there. And and yeah. of course, and of course, then you arrived and you had you had such a wonderful reception. You played so well for MI in that first year. And you made friends with Sanat Jayasuriya, didn't you? I mean, the two of you was chatting away all the time in that bus. Yes, he's a, he's a funny guy. Like, like I said, these are players who, when growing up, you idolize. You know, when whether it don't matter which country is playing, you there's cricketers that you want to be like one day, or you try to take something out of them, of their game, and try to implement it in yours. And Sanat was was someone like that. And um, you know, you 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 never expect some of these great legends to be so humble and simple and easy to get along with and you know I used to always rub his ball head and, and play with him like <laughs> he's, a nice, he's a nice funny guy I like it. I remember one day you had two bats kept over there and Tendulkar just came and picked up the two bats and said play with this one don't play with this one yes, and yes. as it turned out you had written one and two on those two bats yes, yes. do you remember yep. what, what did he say to you he said the bats talk to me yeah, he, he picked up the bat and he started pinging it like this. So I never saw, I never in my life experienced someone um, testing out a bat, the quality of a bat by the flick of the fingers. 
So he was just like this, flicking this one. He rested down, he started flicking again, and he said, this is number one, this is number two. Obviously, if Sachin Tendulkar said, this is your number one, but it has to be. So I make sure I don't make a mistake. I write number one, then I write number two. And, uh, and actually, it, it worked, you know, it become one of my best bats. Did you enjoy that time, that, that first year, because it was a completely different environment for you that first year at Mumbai Indians? Yeah, um, I didn't know what to expect. Like my first opportunity to play in a franchise tournament, and, you know, IPL was it was all the best stars, the best players around the world in this particular tournament. You know, and like I said it was early days for me in my international career. Um, just just youth on my side, no experience, and walking in the dressing room with some of the best that play in the game. Um, you know, what was for me what was the most uh, touching part was. The fact that our owners, uh, when I only when I was there, I get to realize the the power that they have, you know, the wealth that they have, um, you know, the richest in India, top five in the world, and yeah, you the wife is the, is the Mrs. Dambani is the the front runner, but when is when when the boss sir come come around the team, so very soft spoken, you will never think like this is this man worth so much and like uh, they really treat everyone like family and I enjoyed every moment with them, every moment with them, uh, you know, after, I think after my first season when I was leaving, I asked Sachin for one of his bat and he gave me one of his bat, he sang it and he said it's a pleasure to play cricket with me and those words mean a lot to me, you know, um, it wasn't about my performance, it, I guess maybe because of my attitude, the way how I play the game and the right spirit and um, you know, getting a bat from Sachin with his signature personalized and saying it's a pleasure to play with me and hope to play with me again one day. Those words never come out of my head. And what did you call Mr. Ambani? You called him Mrs. Boss's husband, what is it? What do you call him? <laughs> Tell us about, yeah, go on, go on, go on. No, 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 she's, I, I, enjoy, I really enjoy her. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a, even now, I don't play for Emma anymore and whenever both teams play against each other, you can still feel a genuine love for each other. And um, they will always be a special team and a special family to me. Now, when you were going, two things happened when you were leaving at the end of that season. You had to leave early because the West Indies had a camp in Barbados. Yeah. You had to leave early, so you asked Tendulkar for a bat. In return, you got yeah. a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the story was, um, we, uh, I think we are maybe like about fifth in the table or something like that. And um, we needed to win a particular game to get into the playoffs. And this was Hyderabad. We win, yeah, in Hyderabad. If we win this game, our chances making it in the top four was very great. And uh, but I know to myself, if I play that game and take a commercial flight, I would have, you know, reached late for preparation. Those days I was playing Test cricket for West Indies. Um, I would have to fly to Trinidad, then fly back to Jamaica. And when I calculated the time, I would have reached late. I reached like one day before the test match. So I called Brian and I said, you know, the boss said they need me to play this game. They will do anything in their powers to get me to Jamaica in time. And I was like, OK, what are you going to do? And they said, OK, we have nine planes. We're going to give you one to take you straight to Jamaica. So I called Brian. I was like, what to do? You know, Brian is a captain. And he was like, I'll give you one advice. I said, what is it? He said, take the plane, but make sure I'm fly a girl from Trinidad to take that plane ride with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, um, yeah, and then, um, so I was like, okay. Um, I told uh, Rahul and the management team that, you know, I get the permission to play as long as I get to Jamaica on time. And I never forget him after the game. We win the game, and I did have a, a, a decent game. And uh, get off, get into the dressing room, have a quick shower. My bag's already packed. Everything is waiting there for me. Straight to the airport. And when I get to the airport now, seeing this this private jet waiting for me, it's like, 
wow, like, I can't imagine. I just started my international career and there's a private plane waiting for me to take me from India straight to Jamaica all by myself. And I was like, this is insane. I remember when I stopped in Portugal to get a refuel, the guy take me off for the aircraft and he said, he pointed at a spot and he said, that's where Cristiano Ronaldo plane lands whenever he come to Manchester United. And I go, wow. <laughs> at, at, at that point, I thought I was like, yeah, I'm somebody special. <laughs> the other thing you did while you were at Mumbai Indians was almost force them to get Karen Pollard in. Yeah. Uh, you were you were you were largely instrumental in getting Kyron Pollard to the IPL, weren't you? Yes, I was. Um, for me, whenever I see talent, I know talent, and um, you know, Pollard. Uh, um, the first time I asked when Mumbai needed a replacement for me, Pollard was the name I give. And when they try contacting Pollard, he had just get injured playing a club game. So I recommend Dwayne Smith, and that's how Dwayne Smith was my replacement. Yes. And then the, the following year, when it was a Champions uh, Champions League in uh, Hyderabad, I called Rahul and I said, Kyron Pollard, he is here. Come and sign him now. Before the tournament start, come and sign him. And Rahul and Robin Singh, they leave from Mumbai and, and come to Hyderabad. I never forget, they come with a contract. And the contract, I think, at the time was 200,000 USD at the time. And I called Paul and I said, meet me in the lobby now. He come downstairs, he meet Rahul, he meet Robin Singh. And he saw the contract with 200,000 US. Now for us coming from Trinidad, 19 year old, 200,000 US, is like, wow. He was like, Dwayne, are you serious? I said, yeah, sign it. They're going to sign you from now. And it so happened that in that same tournament, Pollard had an unbelievable tournament. Like the entire world stand on their feet and applaud him. It's like everyone wants to know who is this kid. And when the shout come around that Mumbai already signed him, I think it was forced to go into like an auction, a mini auction. And uh, IPL had put a clause that no franchise can get more than 750 or something like that to get him and eventually Mumbai win the bid and they get him and now you see you cannot see a, a Mumbai Indians without Pollard and for me that was a great joy for me because we started playing together then I started getting dropped and he continued playing and it started to affect him and I said to him don't worry about me the most important thing is once you perform as long as you perform then I can justify my decision in, in backing you as a player. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just happy for him that today, you know, this guy become one of the best in the world. And, you know, um, Mrs. Ambani always thank me every time she see me. Thank you, thank you, because of you, we get Pollard and all these things. So um, it's, it's special and our, our friendship develop also. Now, your relationship with Pollard is, I, I, what are, one of the sites I love most in the IPL is you're bowling to Pollard. And, and you get him out, there's, you, you're doing something, he hits a six, he's doing something to you. Now, if you don't know your relation, you think, hang on, these two guys from today are going hard at each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, we are very competitive, very, very competitive. And, um, you know, we challenge each other in different ways. Uh, obviously, Pollard is a very dangerous player, and um, you know when whenever I do get him out, I like to, I like to celebrate and, and and let him know that I'm here. But also it does happen in return. Also, sometimes I don't get him out and he smack me. Um, but we keep coming at each other. That's the most important thing on the field because we are like I said we are very competitive. Uh, I I enjoy getting him out. I enjoy beating him, uh, but Apart from that, we are very good friends. So a lot of people, if they're watching, they don't know it like these guys hate each other. Well, it's not like that. Um, it's just um, someone who bring the best out of me and I enjoy challenging against him. And then of course came that move from blue to yellow and all of a sudden the world got used to seeing you as, as, as a Mumbai Indian and there you are turning up with MS, the start of a great relationship for Chennai Super Kings. 
if you remember around that time, 2011, there was some talk that the West Indies players are not available. Uh, Chris Gale wasn't sold, and then all of a sudden, right at the end, CSK put the panel up, and you're a CSK player. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. I remember that like it was yesterday because um, the IPL auction always go ar around the same time with Big Bash. So I was getting ready to play a game against Adelaide Strikers in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And while warming up, Aaron Finch walked past and said, Chris Gale, unsold. So I was like, what? Chris Gale, unsold? I said, no, that can't be right. He was like, yeah, Chris Gale, unsold. So I said to myself, if Chris Gale is unsold, then definitely I will be unsold. Like, there's no way Chris Gale to be unsold. So I, straight away, I took my mind off for the IPL and the auction. I, I didn't pay any attention to it again. And just before the toss take, Finch walked past again and he said, Johnny, yellow, yellow. I was like, yellow, yellow? He said, Chennai, Chennai does pick you up in the auction. I was like, Chennai? No, that was the last team I was expecting, eh, to be honest. And um, so I was like, for how much? He said, base price, 200,000. I was like, base price? I was like, okay, no problem. I said, well, it's still better than nothing, you know? Yeah. So I was, I was happy that I actually get selected, you know? Because again, Chris Gale on Soul, and I got to learn like, oh, I was the only West Indian player who was selected in that particular auction. Um, the previous two years at Mumbai, well, my contract was like 600,000, so it was a big drop. Uh, but I look on the positive side as an opportunity again for me, because at the end of the day, I could have easily be unsold also. Yeah. And I come to realize that West Indies Cricket Board had right to BCCI, IPL, and saying that West Indian players will be unavailable for this IPL season. And I think that was very uh, harsh on, 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 on the board back then to, to make such decision because at the end of the day, IPL is a big tournament yeah. for every cricketer. Not only West Indian players, but every cricketer around the world benefited from IPL financially and their own personal game developed. So Chennai Super Kings take the gamble, take the chance and they get me and um, I, I remember that same year, my first game was in um, Rajasthan. And when I get there, because I, I missed the first few games, and when I get there, the night before the next game, Fleming messaged me and said he want to have a chat with me in the morning. So I was like, okay, cool. So I wake up early, have my breakfast, and I go and meet the coach, Stephen Fleming. And he was like, are you okay to play tonight? Now, for me, come in, I was honestly thinking, okay, I am part of this Chennai Super Kings, one of the best IPL teams, you know. Um, there's Scott Styrus, there's Tony, there's Doug Bollinger, there's Hussey. There's all these big players there. So for me, I was just happy to be a part of the squad. I prepared myself, come and learn as much as possible. If I play, I play. If I don't, I'm there to learn. And Fleming said to me, are you okay to play tonight? I was like, play? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, yeah, I don't mind playing. He was like, well, the skipper wants you to play. So I was like, okay then. And he said straight away, Dhoni said, once I'm happy, 100% I'm playing. And we went down to the stadium and I made my debut for Chennai Super Kings against Rajasthan Royals. And I was so excited and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to let my e down, I didn't want to let the franchise down. I was just like, this kid, this, I want to do everything. I want to keep, I want to bat, I want to bowl. <laughs> it's just like, and uh, that was, uh, we ended up winning that, that same year. How, how was the difference between playing Mumbai Indians and playing Chennai Super Kings? Um, well, in Mumbai, it was my early days of my cricketing career. I was still learning. I haven't had the experience like I have when I started playing with CSK. Um, Mumbai also was still, wasn't sure how to get a real team together. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, they now started to put a lot of effort and energy now in into the thinking and how they go about selecting players. And that's why they are so successful now. 
And even with CSK, that's why both teams are so successful because with CSK, what, what I learned with Chennai Super Kings is that, and especially with, with MS leadership and Fleming, they both have this relationship where they really understand each other mm. and uh, they don't have outside interference at all you know ms run the team fleming they're both in charge they're both on the same page all the time and performance they don't judge players by their performance and that is very important uh you know you come there you perform you don't perform they treat you the same way even collectively as a team if the team is performing well or performing bad the management level remains the same you know, in other teams, you know, you, you feel that pressure. If you don't perform in a few games, you feel pressure. You feel, like, okay, I'm going to get dropped or they are going to say something bad about me. They're going to think you're not good enough. Uh, with CSK, you don't ever feel that. You don't ever, ever feel that. And, and MS always said, the reason why you, you guys are here is because we think you are good enough to be here. Don't try to prove anything. Don't try. We are not asking you to do anything. You're not accustomed to doing just be a step. And they create an environment, no matter who come in to CSK. You look at Shane Watson recently, he said openly, like, if he was in a different franchise, he would have either get dropped or think of retiring already, you know? And, um, you know, that CSK is a very, I don't think you could see a, a franchise like that again. Like, you know, but a lot of credit have to be given to Tony and Fleming. Now, and, and so now suddenly there is this relationship that starts to develop between this flamboyant, singing, dancing, blingy man from Trinidad and this very yeah. quiet man from small town India who speaks maybe one fiftieth of what you speak. Very quiet. Yeah. And this relationship starts to blossom. Doesn't it? You build a relationship with them, is yeah. It's it's strange, as you said, like we are so different in so many ways. Mm. Like, you know, um, I think because I try picking um, the analyst brain, I was like, you know, why me? Like, cause I asked myself, why someone like MS have so much faith in me? Like, you know, I played different teams, even in, in West Indies, when my, at the time, my own, my own board or my own selectors don't have the faith, like what MS have in me. And um, I always try to figure out what was the moment when it was that MS realized that I'm a good cricketer or that he, I am someone that he can trust, like the way he, 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 he trusts me in, in yeah. um, you know, bowling dead overs and stuff. And, you know, Laxmi keeps saying he don't know what it is, but he know my love me and he respect my talent and the way how I play the game. And that means a lot to me because this is, arguably the best captain in the world and as you said someone who have achieved so much and then this West Indian player um, who so a lot of people criticize in different times this one particular guy has so much faith in me and more often than not I deliver and that is what when you back someone a hundred percent don't matter what what they can do for you and our bond our friendship as we call each other, brother from another mother. You know, um, that goes from not only playing for CSK, but even when West Indies versus Team India, that that friendship also carry on. You know, whenever MS come to Trinidad, I remember one time he had his birthday uh, in Trinidad, India playing West Indies, and his wife actually said, she said this to me during the IPL season of that year, she said, my, he is going to be spending his birthday in Trinidad. I want you to please make it special for him. And I was like, 100%, no problem. I get my friends, I get my parents to cook food. I invite some of my very close friends. And I tell MS on his birthday, I will have um, something at my house for him. And, you know, Virat Kohli was there, Suresh Reina was there, uh, Murli Vijay. Um, you know, um, Ishan Sharma, they had like six Indian players came and we all celebrated his birthday. We do the traditional dipping face cake with, with it. And, yeah. and I remember my daughter seen it for the first time and she was like, 
Daddy, why you doing him that? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, she, no, don't do him that. And it's like, again, um, I make it clear to my family, like, these guys are my family when I'm outside in India. These are the people who look after me. And, you know, because of, of these guys, you know, I'm able to live a very comfortable life and, you know, provide for my family. And, you know, I think Chennai Super Kings, we make Dwayne Bravo. You know, at one point in time, there was doubts. You know, like I said, my international career, I wasn't sure, you know, test team drop. ODI has been in and out of the team. And playing for Chennai Super Kings, it just rebuilt my brand and, and, and that, that, that flamboyant cricketer who had that promising mm -hmm. start to international career. Joining CSK is, was the rebirth of that. And, um, you know, I enjoy every moment of it. I have most of my success there. You know, win two IPLs, Purple Caps, Champions League, and, and um, still going there. Yeah. So when MS throws you the ball in the death overs, is it yeah. just fate? I know what you're going to do? Or does he tell you, this is my plan, this is what I want you to do? Or does he say, you set the field, you bowl, you know what you have to do? <laughs> the honest truth, he allowed me to do what I want. And I think that even in a tense situation? No, he allowed me. If it's really, really, really tight, he will suggest something, but he'll always go with what I want. And, um, you know, and again, that goes with trust. Like, mm. he knows I'm good at what I'm doing. He trusts me. And as long as I try to execute to the best of my ability, he don't really worry about the results too much. You know, and... Um, his calmness um, rubbed off on every player on the team. He don't ever be flustered and he don't panic. And most times when he gave me the ball in those crunch moments, um, you know, because I bowled the MS a lot in the nets in practice. I always challenge myself against him. So he know my, my mental toughness, he know my thinking. So when I am put in that position in a game, he trusts me enough on my own to deliver. Now, these are the two teams. For us in India, you think Dwayne Bravo, you think MI, more and more you think you think CSK. But you've traveled around the world, you've played for so many franchises. Let's take your story ahead with that. It couldn't be easy for you when you're not playing for the West Indies, but you're playing the Big Bash, you're playing the Blast, you're playing in Bangladesh, you played for a few teams in Bangladesh. Two things that come to my mind is, is there a feeling this is my team? Because you're playing for maybe five teams in a year. So is, the, is there that yeah. feeling, this is my team? And, and, and the second is, how do you stay fit? Because you are in charge of your own fitness, right? So you hire your own trainers, what do you do off the, in between series? It couldn't be easy because you're always traveling around. Yeah, well, when it comes to the team, um, the teams that will always be very close to my heart. You know, um, it's hard to be saying okay this is my as i said i play in so many different leagues once one year i would play with one team in one tournament and the next year i played a different team in the same tournament so when it comes to like identifying a particular team with me in some tournaments it's hard but what i do know every single team i play for in that tournament i give 100 percent, and that team become my team um mm -hmm. but csk will always be at the top of my heart. Um, you know, because like I said, most of my success, and most of my years with one franchise, I am most loyal to that team. Um, Trinidad and Tobago in CPL, whether it's the Knight Riders or the Red Force team, is also another team very special to my heart. Mumbai will always be special because they give me the opportunity that no one never even think of. So, that will always be a special team for me as well. So those two teams, along with obviously West Indies, um, you know, but the other teams around the world, uh, I, I, I enjoy playing with, you know, in, 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 um, in Australia, I, I represent the both Melbourne teams, you know, yes. both running teams and both stars. So if someone asks me, which team I rather, I always say Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You haven't done a song on Sammy yet, but you've done a song on mine. <laughs> Sammy always cuts me up for that. Yeah. He said every time he 
first song, you don't ever call my name. <laughs> um, the, the Mahi song, MS song, I have this, I haven't complete the entire track as yet. I still have to work on the music and some other lyrics that I want to put in there. But I was thinking like, you know, I don't think anyone ever do a song and tribute that song to that a one particular athlete. And, um, you know, I was coming up with ideas in my mind, like, you know, I want to do something for him. Like, you know, he's coming to the end of his career. He had this great career. He had a big impact on my personal career and also so much other cricketers. You know, you listen to interviews like guys like Rohit Sharma, Hardik, even Virat, um, you know, they all praise him where their career is concerned, you know. So he gives so many cricketers who would have never think of representing Team India, he gave them those opportunities. And he also wins so many titles for, 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 the, for the country. So I wanted to do something special for him. And I named the song Number Seven. You know, um, you know, okay. it's his number. It's, 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 it's a special number for him. Uh, and um, it's like, um, you want me to do a piece of it? <laughs> uh, do, do, do two or three lines. Do, do as much as you can because it might better you sing than I do. It's like, um, it's a MS Doni number seven, MS Doni number seven, all of Ranchi shouting Mahi, all of India shouting Doni, all of Chennai shouting Tala, MS Doni is a world beater. <laughs> Does rhythm come naturally to you? Does rhythm come naturally to you? <laughs> okay, I'm, we're going to give you a little test. We're going to give you a little test, which is we've got a little grid made for you. We're going to, we're going to ask you to pick your top five in T20. But you can only pick one from each set that we give you. Right? We're going to have a little yeah, game yeah. with you. So we're going to end with music, but before that, we're going to have a game with you. So. Okay. so Right, your first lot, if, you, if you've got that in front of you, you've got to pick one from between Hayden, Gale, Warner, Sewag, McCullum, or Dwayne Smith. Gale. Gump Chris your Gale. Second, okay, your second lot is Gautam Gambhir, Josh Butler, Shane Watson, Kale Rahul, Johnny Besto, Chris Lynn. Shane Watson. Yeah. Okay, um, Kohli, Smith, Raidu. You played with Raidu as well. Duplessis, yeah. Raina, Williamson. You're in trouble, Dwayne. Yeah, I'm in trouble there. Um, <laughs> Virat is the man. Raina is my favorite player. But, um, I'll go with Virat. I'll tell Kohli. Suresh. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got just two more before we finish. Your next lot is Ro Rohit Sharma, Michael Hussey, A.B. De Villiers, Yuvrat Singh, Ben Stokes, Rishabh Pant. A.B. A.B. De Villiers. A. Okay. Your final lot, I think I know the answer already, but I'll ask you anyway. We've got MS, Karthik, Pandya, Maxwell, Russell Pollard. Oh, I don't know what your answer is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that question, I was like, oh my God, why, why you all put it like that? Huh? That's too difficult. <laughs> I tell but you, I these, young with... kids at Creek Bus, these young kids at Creek Bus, I tell you. I will go with um... MS Dhoni, number seven. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Dwayne, th thank you very much. Sorry we took a little longer, but thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Pleasure, Dwayne. Thank thanks for your time. Thank you very, very much for your time.